Uh, and certainly fueling the uncertainty would uh, be um, an uncertainty around U.S. trade relations. You know, yesterday we, we had our board meeting um, at the Blue Water uh, Center here, and the board room is quite spectacular. You sit and you look out, and the, and the bridge is right there, and there was just an endless succession of trucks uh, coming across that bridge. So, um, you know, that, so, so with that in mind, that, you know, there's a ton of uncertainty there. It seems to be changing with every moment. Um, what's the government's strategy to, to mitigate that uncertainty or the eventual impact? Um, how are we going to keep the free flow of goods right. and people back and forth across that border? So we have been we've been working very consistently uh, since the election to to do a couple of things. Um, first of all, to reinforce the relationships that we as uh, whether me as premier with governors or ministers with, uh, with their counterparts in the United States um, to reinforce the relationships, but in doing that, to make sure that uh, it's well understood how integrated our economies are and how many thousands of jobs in each of the jurisdictions in the states, particularly there are, uh, there are 28 states for which Ontario is their number one or number two market. So 20 for whom we're their number one market, eight for whom we're their number two market. So I've been going systematically through those, those governors and, and talking with them or meeting with them. I think I've met with 12 or 13, or have talked to or have met with 12 or 13 to this point. I will continue to do that. I'll go to the National Governors Association meeting in Rhode Island this summer. Uh, we're hosting, um, uh, Governor Snyder of Michigan and I are hosting the Great Lakes Governors Meeting um, in the fall. So I'm going to continue to do both informal and uh, and and uh, more formal outreach with uh, with those governors. Um, but that's so that's the general relationship building. And I have to tell you, and many of those are the majority of the the governors I've talked to are Republican governors. But to a person, they all understand that their economy is integrated with Ontario's and that they need Ontario's economy to be successful. They need us as a market and they want us to continue to uh, the, to the, work with them. The, num the number that we heard this morning from the Canadian Chamber was that with respect to New York State, it's, it's 700,000 jobs and $30 billion. Yes, Staggering. It's, it's enormous, it's enormous. So when the state of New York was bringing their budget through and it looked like, like it might be a Buy America clause mm -hmm. in it, yeah. we had, people on the ground. So we have a representative in Washington, Manette Smith, who went to Albany, was walking the halls of the, the and talking to legislators. Um, we had uh, people who stayed as the budget was being written. And you know, some of you may know that at one point the Buy America Clause was in, then it went out, then it went back in again, it went back and forth. There was, there was literally a sort of horse trading process that went, went on and we knew that we needed to be there as those negotiations were happening. So right now what we're doing is um, our folks in the states are reaching out to the states where it looks like there may be a discussion about Buy America bubbling up again. Yeah. So there's Buy America, there are the border uh, adjustment taxes, yeah. and there's NAFTA. Yeah. And so we have a very, uh, we have a very <laughs> systematic approach to NAFTA. We've got um, all of the ministries working together. I, I'm uh, chairing a committee that meets every couple of weeks to, uh, to get an update on what's going on in the states and to make sure that we're tracking our strategy. And some of you may have seen a, an article in the, in the Globe today about the reality that we, we we're not going to shy away from putting in place uh, a response. Yeah. yeah, to putting in place a response to stand up for our businesses. But we have to do it intelligently. You know, I don't think anyone wants to be engaged in a trade war. What we want to do is we want to preempt that. We want to yeah. avoid that. And I think that the mutual interest that uh, that we feel with our uh, American cousins is going to be the safest way to. Uh, to uh, avoid getting into something that's going to be bad for people on both sides of the border. Yeah, I think it's it's it seems to me that it's it, it's it, it, it's in an informed. It has to be informed. Exactly. Unfortunately, so much of what we've seen to date is rhetoric. Well, and there's a real gap, and I found this when I was in um, when I was in Chicago just a couple of weeks ago, meeting with uh, Governor Rauner. The the gap between what is being said in Washington. Mm -hmm and what is understood in the states 
is quite mm-hmm. is quite a, a large gap. Yeah. And so that actually made me encouraged. That made me encouraged. And the second thing that made me encouraged was that among business people in uh, in Chicago when I was there, we had a, a round table and we were talking about what they think is, is going to come. And they, they said that the level of unpredictability in terms of what actually will get done, despite the rhetoric, is very, very high. Yeah. So, you know, I think that uh, we have to be vigilant, we have to be, firm. as you say, firm, and we have to continue to get information to our, uh, to our counterparts in the state. And I think that's the best way for us to, uh, mm-hmm. to proceed. So let's say we, we emerge unscathed from whatever these discussions uh, are about NAFTA. Um, you know, many are still concerned that not just what we've talked about, but that the U.S. will move ahead by lowering corporate taxes. Uh, they're going to loosen environmental regulations. We've already heard lots about that, and that's going to put our businesses at a competitive disadvantage. So, in light of that uncertainty, the tricky question that I have for you is: Is now the time for cap and trade? So let me just. There, there are two pieces to what you said there um, in terms of uh, in terms of taxes. You know, uh, the Minister of uh, Economic Development wrote this morning when he was talking about the unemployment and the jobs numbers, he made it quite clear that we're certainly not raising corporate taxes. And I know there have been some who have said that we would do that. We're not raising corporate taxes. We, we absolutely know that. And beyond that, we're watching very carefully to see what actually happens in terms of corporate taxes in the States. We know that our lower tax rate in Ontario and in Canada has been a huge advantage. It's been a real differentiator for yeah. us and so we're watching very closely and you know we will we will respond um, depending on what happens south of the border because as I said when I you know when I sit in meetings in other parts of the world and we sort of add up that 28 percent gap and advantage that we have a big part of that is our corporate tax rate so we get that um, our educated workforce is another part of that, and I think we may talk about that in a bit. In terms of in terms of cap and trade and fighting climate change, I would just say to all of us, you know, because this room is obviously full of business people, um, but you are mothers and fathers and aunts and uncles, and um, you all know that we all have to play a role in tackling climate change. I mean. Um, there's no question, there's absolutely no question that where the world is going is towards a low carbon economy. And so the reason we settled on cap and trade is it's the cheapest and it's the most effective way and it actually allows businesses to get the support that they need. And so, you know, as the revenue comes in from cap and trade, all of that revenue is earmarked to go back out into the community to be invested in businesses, in retrofitting um, buildings and homes and and supporting businesses in reducing their greenhouse gas emissions. It's much, much more effective in reducing greenhouse gas emissions and at the same time allowing for innovation than a carbon tax, for example. And it's cheaper. It it is less costly. So so we are going to continue to tackle climate change. That is my commitment to my grandchildren. You know, um, when my grandchildren and your children and grandchildren turn to you and say, well, what did you do? You're going to be able to say, we worked very hard to get our greenhouse gas emissions down. And he, again, to that gap between what's being said nationally and, um, and locally or, or statewide in the, in the states, there is that same gap. Because even though at the, at the federal level there may be one conversation about um, reducing greenhouse gas emissions or denying or not climate change, those conversations are different at the state level. And so, for example, we're going to be linking our market with California. Well, California is a state in the United States, and they are moving ahead and they are leaders in the world. So, so I think that we, um, you know, we have a responsibility. We will work very, and have worked very closely with businesses to make sure that you get the support that you need. Um, but we will we'll continue on that continue on that path.